In this video, we're going to discuss and demonstrate muscle energy for the clavicle, specifically for the SC and AC joints. As I'm going through this demonstration, I'm going to be touching a few different areas along your collarbone, uh, at the top of your chest, in front of your neck, and also out by your shoulder, and then also on your arm. If you're uncomfortable or you feel any tenderness, please let me know. If you need me to stop or change what I'm doing, let me know. I, I could stop at any time. Okay. Is it okay if I begin? Yes. All right. So beginning with the SC joint, I can start by making contact with the clavicle, moving medial, finding where the clavicle drops off and find the sternoclavicular joint. Then I'm going to replace it with my other hand. I'm going to stand behind and to the side of my patient, very similar to the somatic dysfunction uh, diagnosis process. I'm going to bring the patient's arm out to 90 degrees of abduction and 90 degrees of elbow flexion. And I'm going to be utilizing external and internal rotation of the patient's arm to induce external and internal rotation at the clavicle. So we're going to treat the SC joint as if it had an external rotation dysfunction. So a right uh, SC joint external rotation dysfunction. So for uh, muscle energy, which is a direct technique, we want to, want to position into the restricted barrier, which in this case is going to be internal rotation. So I'm going to bring the arm into internal rotation while monitoring at the SC joint. And once I reach the very end of that range of motion and I feel tension at the joint, I'm going to want to use my hand to brace against the posterior aspect of the forearm so I can provide isometric resistance. And then I'm going to want my patient to externally rotate their arm while I provide isometric resistance. And we can tell them to either lift their arm against us or we can also show them that motion to make it a little bit easier. Can you go ahead and lift your arm against my hand here? We're going to provide isometric resistance for three to five seconds. Then we're going to ask them to relax. Go ahead and relax. As they relax, we're also going to relax. We're going to pause. We're going to feel a little bit of a creep as the a joint moves into further internal rotation. We're going to follow that till we meet the new restricted barrier. Then we're going to have our patient uh, push up again. So go ahead and push up against me. We're going to provide isometric resistance for three to five seconds and then relax. And then again, we're going to pause and then follow as it moves into further internal rotation. Go ahead and lift again. Then after three to five seconds, we can have them relax. Go ahead and relax. We can pause and after three to five total contraction relaxation cycles, we can add a little bit of an optional passive stretch through the barrier and then return our patient back to a neutral position and then reassess for somatic dysfunction. Moving on to the AC joint, we're going to find the AC joint by following the clavicle lateral and then we can use the spine of the scapula, find the acromion and then find the junction between the clavicle and the acromion. We're going to switch hands. Again, put our foot on the table, bring the patient's shoulder to 90 and the elbow to 90. Then we're going to again use internal external rotation to induce motion at the joint while we're monitoring at the AC joint. So now we're going to treat the AC joint as if it was an internal rotation dysfunction. So in this case, our barrier is going to be an external rotation. We're going to be moving the arm into external rotation as we're monitoring the AC joint. We're going to feel where the end of that range of motion occurs. We're also going to feel uh, the tension build at the joint. And once we're at that restricted barrier, we're going to make sure that our hand is in a good place to provide isometric resistance to the forearm. And then we're going to have our patient internally rotate their arm against us. We can also demonstrate for them so that it makes it a little bit easier uh, to describe. Can you push your hand forward against me? And we're going to provide isometric resistance for three to five seconds. And then we can have them relax. Go ahead and relax. And then we're going to pause. We'll feel the joint move into further external rotation. Then we'll provide isometric resistance as we have them contract. So go ahead and push your hand forward. We provide isometric resistance for three to five seconds. And then relax. We pause. We follow to a little bit further external rotation. And then after a total of three to five times, we can add an optional passive stretch into external rotation through the restricted barrier. Then we can return our patient back to a neutral position, either at their side or back in this somatic dysfunction evaluation position to then reassess for somatic dysfunction.